Max Zing, Singapore's was kid who helped his team from Imperial College London win British television quiz show, University Challenge, says he didn't always fit in. Thank you for watching, making video is time consuming and hard work. Kindly click the subscribe button and click the like button so as to encourage us to make the videos you like. Thank you and happy watching. Max Zeng, a Singaporean student helped his team from Imperial College London win British television quiz show University Challenge. The third-year biochemistry student tells Today newspaper he spent most of his time reading and exploring subjects he was interested in. He added that since his team won the quiz final, he hasn't received the same level of attention in Britain as he has in Singapore. Speaking to Today newspaper from London to Singapore via Zoom on Sunday, April 10, afternoon, he said, I will say that as a teenager in general, I was a bit of a boisterous weirdo. I did have friend groups throughout school though. People didn't really like me despite newfound fame, geography was maxing says, he didn't always fit in. At the end of things, I didn't know when to keep my mouth shut. I was very opinionated on things that I have since changed my mind on, said Zeng, 22, whose full name is Maximilian Zeng. My mother just assumed it was some random quiz tournament I was going through and she didn't really know what it was. She didn't anticipate the publicity at all, said Max Zeng. Max Zeng said that he plans on pursuing a master's in engineering after he has completed his undergraduate degree. I did a very biotechnology-heavy third year in university, and I'm doing synthetic biology and protein engineering for my final year of technology in pharmaceuticals, he said. Start of a 10. What short word appears in three separate titles of creative works, following respectively the name of a town in Nottinghamshire, a geological period, and a compass direction in works by Jane Austen? Imperial Sharif. Park. Park is correct, yes. You get three bonuses on the Anglo-African composer Samuel Coleridge-Taylor. Coleridge-Taylor is perhaps best known for his trilogy of cantatas, collectively known as the Song of Hiawatha, based on which U.S. poet's work of the same name? Longfellow. Henry Wadsworth with Longfellow, yeah. yeah. Longfellow. Correct. A poem by Coleridge-Taylor, first published in 1897, celebrates the 50th anniversary of the independence of which West African country? Uh, 97. Well, it would be really early, Max, like 1910s, 1920s, something like that. Uh, Liberia? Probably not, though. West African country. Yeah. Want we'll to say Liberia? Just, just go with Liberia. Liberia? Liberia is correct. After his death in 1912, widespread outrage at how little Coleridge Taylor had profited from his success led to the establishment of which organization that collects royalties on behalf of its members? Uh, do you know? Oh. Like musicians or composers? Anything come to mind? No. Uh, pass. It's the Performing Rights Society. Right, we're going to take another starter question now. What? Right, 10 points for this. I need a six-letter term here. Named, perhaps in reference to its largely black colouring, what breed of domestic animal is defined in the OED as a Scottish shepherd's dog? A breed of sheepdog... Uh, Imperial maize! A collie. Collie is correct, yes. <laughs> right. Here are your bonuses. They're on an art museum. Named after a philanthropist born in 1856, the Musée Marmottin in Paris, also bears the name of which leading French painter who died at Giverny in 1926? That would be Monet. Yeah. Monet, oh yeah, yeah. Uh, Monet. Monet is correct. The collection of the Marmottin includes Monet's impression Sunrise, the work that gave the Impressionist movement its name. It is a view of which French port? Oh, I only know it's called the Impressions. It's like the Havre or Marseille. Marseille. Do you want to say Marseille? Go to Marseille. Yeah. Marseille? No, it's Le Havre. Uh. The Marmottin also houses a major collection by which Impressionists? Paintings include Eugene Manet at the Isle of Wight and Children at the Washbowl. Oh, is that um, one of the female, like uh, Morisot? Mary, Cass Mary Cassatt, if it's Cassatt. children. Could it be Mary Cassatt? True, true. Uh, Cassatt? No, it's Bertin Morisot. That's fine. Right, we're going to take a picture round.
For your picture starter, you're going to see a Venn diagram representing the land borders of two countries. The countries themselves are shown in outline, and their neighbours are represented by flags. The two countries have one neighbour in common. Name that connecting country. Imperial Tsung. A Poland. Poland is correct, yes. There we are. It links the Czech Republic and Belarus, as you can see there. So we follow on from the Czech Republic and Belarus and their shared neighbour Poland with picture bonuses of three more Venn diagrams showing the land borders of a pair of countries. In each case, give the single shared neighbour that lies in the intersection of the diagram. Firstly... Bulgarian Armenia is so a Turkey. Uh, Turkey? Turkey is correct. There we are. You can see Turkey's in green there. Right, secondly... Uh, Congo and Zimbabwe, so this is going to be uh, Zambia. Zambia. Zambia is correct, between the DRC and Zimbabwe. And finally... Laos and Malaysia, so Thailand. Thailand. Thailand is correct, between Malaysia and Laos. Well done. Right, 10 points for this. The 1420 Battle of Witzkopf Hill and the 1620 Battle of White Mountain took place near which present-day capital? Imperial Tsung. Prague. Prague is correct. You get a set of bonuses now, Imperial, on ancient India. Shortly after the death of Alexander the Great, Chandra Gupta founded which large pan-Indian empire? Mauryan dynasty. Uh, the Mauryan dynasty? That's correct, yes. Chandra Gupta's palace was at Pataliputra on the Ganges. Which present-day Indian state capital occupies the site? Uh, Patna. Uh, Patna. Patna is correct. Who was the third ruler of the Maurya Empire? Ashoka. Uh, Ashoka. Ashoka is correct. Well done. No. And that was wrong. St. John's College came before 155. The Imperial had 210, though. Well, St. John's, you'll probably come back as one of the highest scoring losing teams, I bet. Thank you very much. Imperial, congratulations to you. 210 is a magnificent score, and we should look forward to seeing you definitely in round two. I hope you can join us next time for another first round match, but until then, it's goodbye from St. John's College, Cambridge. Goodbye. goodbye. It's goodbye from Imperial College, London. Goodbye. Bye. And it's goodbye from me. We have come to the end of this video. Thank you for watching. Making video is time consuming and hard work. Kindly click the subscribe button and click the like button so as to encourage us to make the videos you like. Thank you and have a good day.